Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. In today's video, you may have seen from the title, I'd like to talk about some plants that still impress me. I wanted to get a lot more in here than I have. A lot of the plants that still impress me, turns out, are actually huge, so that'll have to be a separate video. I'm filming upstairs today, so there are certain larger plants that I can't show you. I've gone around my shop and I picked a couple of things where I think, hmm, I kind of like you, you're still good, like you've stood the test of time for me, 100%. So without further ado, let's just get into it. The first plant that I've grabbed from downstairs that honestly still impresses me, I still look at it and think, yes, boss, love it, really good purchase, grows really well to be honest, hasn't really taken a dive, hasn't burnt, hasn't burnt, nearly all my plants burn these days. First plant I want to talk about is, I believe, it's very dutty, Aglaonema Manila's Pride, is that right? Manila Pride? Manila's Pride. I think it's Manila's Pride. I can't remember when I bought this plant, guys. Was it possibly at the end of summer last year? Or maybe Maybe it was like pushing into October. I'm not really sure. But I got this last year and I potted it up at some point. It's in some really weird substrate. I know you can probably see that. That's just me experimenting with some stuff. I've had a few of them in since and I've been selling them and they've been doing really, really well. This plant, guys, this plant is mint. I honestly think this is a plant that you could have in your house without loads of added humidity and everything else. I just think they're really, really strong. The leaves are quite thick and waxy. They feel a little bit like, if you're familiar with Syngonium Chia Pensi, they feel a bit like that, actually. They're quite close to it, and not a lot of plants are. If you have never felt that plant, basically, it's kind of like a silky, rubbery feeling. So they're kind of tough. Now, I'll probably relate everything I'm saying about this plant to the Syngonium Chia Pensi, because they're very, very tough. And that does include the variegated one but I'm kind of loving this plant still. Now, at one point I thought it was going to go a little bit awry. Can you see this leaf? Since then, we've had a little bit of a better divide. It's not amazing. It's not great, but let me just try and tilt the plant there. We've had that one. Is that the newest one? No, it's not. You wouldn't believe what the newest one is. The newest one is actually this tiny little guy here, and that's just some winter growth, really. I don't, I don't think anything bad of that. We'll just leave that as it is. But I want to talk about this plant really briefly because I just think it's awesome. I don't see it as much in collections or anything like that. I don't see people raving about it and I don't get why. It looks exactly the same as when I shipped it in. It's had no real post shipping damage. Now, obviously, I can't guarantee if you buy this plant from, well, anybody, that that won't happen. This just happens to plants, especially, and I've said this before, when you have huge chunks of variegation like this, so really sectoral chunks of variegation, a lot of the time in shipping, this can brown. It'll either go soggy and brown or crispy and brown, but it can happen, and there's not a lot you can do about it. However, with these leaves just being a little bit thicker, for whatever reason, they shipped really nicely and I haven't had any problems. So I'm not speaking for every plant because I'm willing to believe that this is sort of a really lucky one-off, but this plant is absolutely gorgeous. I will be changing the substrate out of this if you're wondering what's going to happen, and I'm going to put it in the house. If you're wondering what is in here, I can't remember what's in here, by the way. I think I've got some pumice, some it's like lava and stuff like that. So long ago I did this, I can't even remember what is in it but it's done well in it. He hasn't had a ton of growth, I don't think. I would have to go back on the videos and sort of see where he was at when I bought him and what leaves come out, but I remember this big white one come out. That might have been the newest one, so he's had about three or four leaves since then. That's not a ton. It's not a ton. So yeah, that's him. I think, I think that is Aglaonema Manila's pride. Whatever it is, I'm going to do my best to put the right name on the screen. You'll have to excuse me. I haven't dealt with this plant in a little while. He's just sort of sat there looking great. He cute though. Please welcome the pink pot for all your dark boy needs. This is a very small copy of the plant I want to talk about because I didn't really want to risk bringing him up here. You might have seen him on my Anthurium collection video. If you haven't seen that, by the way, I'll link it down below for anything Anthurium. This is essentially my Anthurium Mysterious Dark Boy. Why the name, you ask? If you're new, essentially, I got an Anthurium in... Was it the year before last year? Literally, a long time. And I didn't know what it was. And I tried to ID it. It's really, really hard to do. Seems like it looks like a couple of different things. Don't really know what it is yet. There's been a lot of opinions thrown around. I know y'all are about to say Mudinum in the comments. I know. I don't think it is, though. But anyway, this is Mysterious Dark Boy. That is what I sell him as. I think I do say on my website that I think it could be... Is it Red Beauty or Red Secret? Red Beauty, I think? Something along those lines. I think it could be that, but I don't 
No, I do not think it's Modemonum at all. I don't suspect it's a cross or anything, but I just wanted to talk about him because he's just mint. And honestly, a lot of people struggle with Anthurium, right? I get it. They're not the easiest. I totally get it. The non-velvety Anthuriums generally are a lot easier. It's just fact of life. They just are. This is obviously non-velvety, but it's also very, very dark. But it's also just super easy to look after and it grows really fast and it doesn't need a ton of light to go this color this is not camera trickery it is actually that dark i will try and keep it still that's what he looks like now this is a very small boy and i mean it when i say he is small i have a very large version of this that i must photograph before i propagate him and he's just done me so right and you've probably seen in a lot of my videos he is in the background he just sort of chills there after all of this time even the little guys to be honest they still impress me i love these so so much and if you're wanting something dark that isn't ridiculously light dependent i would honestly suggest one of these because they are easy to grow in my opinion they're a little bit better than things like, to be honest, cheaper things like Colocasia, Black Magic, for example. Really, really difficult. Anything that sort of needs a hell of a lot of light in order to turn like this, I'd maybe steer towards this. It's not the only thing that's dark, of course, there are other things, but I just think for ease of care and how awesome it is, these are great. They don't tend to lean much. Now, I know that's a really weird thing to say, but you know how you just get a lot of houseplants that just lean really quick? Some of them do, some of them don't. And especially in case of Anthurium, I find they're generally a little bit more upright. But this specifically, the way that it sits downstairs, the, the larger version of this, it should really be leaning. It should really be leaning because it's sat sort of next to where the lights are on one of the shelves and you'd expect it to be creeping in and under. It's never done it. It's never done it. It's just grown up really beautifully. So there's many reasons why I like this, but it does still impress me after all this time. I still think this is gorgeous, albeit it is a little plant with just two leaves, but it's very, very cute. So this I'm calling Anthurium Mysterious Dark Boy. This next plant I have not trimmed. It could look better than this, but it don't. This is both an update as well as this still impresses me because this is something I wasn't expecting to like until I saw it in person and I really, really like it, but it's popped out a new leaf. Now it's taken ages and the, the rehabilitation process has not been straightforward, should we say? So I'm gonna give you an update. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about that as well. Now, what is this? Did I even name it? Yes, wait one moment. This, this is perfect pot for this, is it not? Let me just hold it up and try not to get like everywhere. Can you see that? This right here is Homolamina Pink Diamond and it is very nice. So basically, before I get into it, characteristics of this plant are that it, it looks sort of like a cross between a philodendron and an alocasia. It's really weird as just as in the genus. This one specifically will start out pink, as you can probably see right here. Hopefully it does focus right there. It starts out pink, but then you end up with all this minty stuff right here. Can you see that? It fades down from pink. Eventually you'll get green like this, which to be fair, this one, oh my goodness, that's liquor. You get green like this eventually and it fades into a really, really cool minty green. Now I'm all about this, right? And it's weird because generally I don't like pink plants. It has to be a special plant for me to like pink. But this does remind me of another plant that does this. Can you guess what it is? It reminds me of Philodendron Whipple Wick in that the colors are kind of similar. Now I do have one just over here. I will pick it up very quickly to show you this guy. Let my camera figure out what's going on with the lighting. This is Philodendron Whipple Wick and he's great. He's not actually the talking point of today's little segment, but I just want to show you what I mean. If you haven't seen this plant before, it does the same thing. So <laughs> apologies, hopefully I don't get my mic. It comes in a really pinky color, not as pink as the Homolamina but it comes in this beautiful baby pink color. There are tiny, tiny green speckles all over it. And as you can see, it, it sort of fades down to green, but it doesn't fade down universally. It doesn't fade down quickly. It's just kind of weird, really. For this plant, it kind of stays white, sort of, you know, pinky white cream. One of the longest I've ever had a plant do this. This is a really, really nice one. But as I say, it's not the point of the video. I will show you close up though, because they are really, really nice. Can you see what I mean here? Just got little speckles all over them. If you've ever wanted to see what it looks like, 
That's what it looks like near the bottom. I'll put them down, but you get what I mean when I say that this plant is sort of similar. I'm not saying it's the same. Obviously not. That would be ridiculous. Look at the state of it. But it's got the same vibes. So if you like that plant and you want something that's slightly more allocatory, slightly more, you know, it's not going to climb up quite like that. It's just a bit, a bit more chill, really, isn't it? A bit more bushy type vibes. What I will say is the rehabilitation process on this has sucked. It has just started to grow. Now, I can't remember when I got it in. Maybe I'm being harsh. Maybe I'm being harsh. I would have to check. It feels like I've had this in a long time, guys. And as you can see, shipping was not kind. Shipping was not kind to this plant. That's a leaf there. So I have to cover my voice. Hopefully that will work. If you could just see on the tips of the leaves, especially these two here, can you see? It's just sort of suffered. If you like these plants, just be aware that you're going to get a little bit of shipping damage depending on when it was. Now, I'm pretty sure I shipped this towards the end of last year and I'm in the UK. So it was probably a bit cold. I'm not gonna lie. So it can probably come better than this. And I've had homolamina come in before that are way better than this in terms of shipping. So try not to hold this as like the gold standard of how this is. I mean, generally, don't ever do that on my channel. For me personally, it's taken ages. It's taken ages to rehab and it's taken ages to grow. However, it's looking pretty amazing when it does grow. So I'm going to keep on this and we're going to grow it really big and nice because I do only have this one. So yeah, this is homolamina pink diamond. Very, very pretty. Just be aware if you're going to buy it. But I'm still raving about it and it does impress me. I didn't expect to be impressed by this one. This has kind of like crept up on me a little bit. So the next plant I want to talk about is, I think I just bought it kind of on a whim, really. And I, I think I had it on, I buy it and then I, I, for whatever reason, it just took a while to get here and I just, I almost forgot about it before I arrived. This is a very special little plant because I don't really know what it is. It is variegated, but it's just so cute. It's so cute. It seems to not variegate for a little while and sort of come back. It's just coming back now. It's just coming back now. It looks really cute. So this here, again, Again, it's not got insane amounts of variegation on it. Can you see that there? This here is Philodendron SP Tropicals or Spur Tropicals. I know a lot of people say Spur, just feels weird to say that, so I say SP. Same thing. So it is a climber. You can probably see this has been propagated. Please excuse the very grubby pink pot, but it has been propagated. It is all part of the same mother, that same mother that I will have hauled for you guys. I'd love to say mid last year don't know. And he's just been a little darling. Now, he's very, very young, so I'm not entirely sure how he ends up growing, but I have a sneaky suspicion he's going to be amazing because he definitely has some length to his leaves, and his leaves can get very, very lobey. Can you see this? Very, very lobey. I'm really curious to see what happens with him. And this is one of few plants that even though they're young, they still kind of impress me. And it blows my mind that I'm quite impressed by this when this is so much more minimal than a lot of things I have. But I really, really like this guy. He does propagate well, by the way. I might have lost the head cutting, but that was ambitious. Didn't really have aerials when I took it, but a lot of the other ones been fine. I haven't had a super, super variegated yield. As I say, this one was taken from this and it went green for a little bit, but it has just started to come back now. So we had a little slither of white on that piece there, like barely anything worth mentioning. And then we've just come back out with that little number there. How blimmin' awesome is that? That is just gorgeous. So yeah, he doesn't look like much, but I quite like the way he grows. Do you know what I mean? I can see if he was vining, I can see him actually being quite compact. These are very, very thin, by the way. Like, these are very thin. I love him all the same, and he's really, really pretty, and there aren't many of these about. I think there's a couple going around. Obviously, this cutting's gone out. I know I've sold a few cuttings. Someone else has a mother plant. I think there's a couple of other people have mother plants, but they're not everywhere. They're really not everywhere. So if you can get your hands on one, I honestly think it's worth it, and I would love to see one mature. I definitely want to grow one out and see what it's like. I might even put it on a pole in here. Not necessarily the specific plant of course but one of the plants but one last time there is philodendron sp tropicals looking so darn cute i love him so much can i get both both in shot not easily oh he's so cute we love him we love him he's so cute <laughs> right, okay. I don't know why I thought this plant would actually fit in the pink pot, but it doesn't because he's quite a large boy now, you know. Now, I've probably shown you this plant, mm, I don't want to say recently, but within the last three months. I'm going to show you again because I could not do this video without this guy in it. it it could not happen. So this is a plant. See if you, see if you can uh, guess what it is if you watch my channel a lot. This is a plant that removed... The catfish curse for me. 
Once upon a time, I was looking for a certain sort of something and I kept getting catfish because what something looks like on photographs isn't always what it looks like in real life, right? I remember getting this in on the plant haul. I don't think it was last year. I think it was a year before now. It's got to be looking at this. This is ridiculous. And I was so impressed. I'm pretty sure everyone else was and everyone else at the same time was like, oh my God, what is it? Can you believe it? It is what it says it is on the tin. The last thing I've got to tell you about is the fact that the reason I was impressed was because of the color of it. So maybe you've guessed it, maybe you haven't. But the plant that literally still impresses me after all this time, I don't think it's ever going to stop impressing me, is, of course, this guy. This guy is amazing and I've dribbled it all over myself as it happens. I don't even think I can put it in anything to stop that from happening because it doesn't really sit on here. Right, we're going to hold it this way. I, I realize this is dumb. It is dumb, but we're going to hold it this way. So this guy here, we're back. This guy here is known as Microsorum thailandicum. And would you believe he is a fern? He is a fern. The name would suggest he is a fern, but he is a fern. He has one crispy, tiny old leaf here. Let's pull that off. Basically, this is also known as a blue... No, no, that's my name. <laughs> is it a blue oil fern? I was going to say blue oily boy. It's not known as a blue oily boy, but it is on this channel. This is basically him, guys. He is a fern. He is very... Like, the best way I can describe this is like a really, really thick hoya. That's what he feels like. I can't think of any hoya specifically. To be fair, it's more rigid than a hoya. I think I'm being a bit generous there. I've got hoya around me, but I can't really grab them. Yeah, just grabbed hoya dakey eye up there and it's it's stronger than that it's thicker than that these don't bend if you try and bend them they would snap i don't know if you can tell if i wiggle it how firm they are but like i can't i can't bend this this is it he does have some lovely spores on the back that are now wearing off but for a long time he had some really pretty spores that's what he's like on the underside if anyone has ever seen not that impressive but as you can tell the party isn't on the underside it is right here i really hope it comes off on camera i do have some greenery behind me this grass here is is quite thirsty for feed so it's a little bit on the bright side but literally this is the most bluest, most amazing thing. And I think it might have to be a thumbnail. I know I've used it before for thumbnails. I get it, we're all bored of it. But it's so nice, I can't not. He's just so nice. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that they're the easiest things in the world, because I, I don't think they are. And I have other ones of these. They're all right, don't get me wrong, they don't completely tank. You will lose probably some... They're not really fronds, are they? Some leaves, anyway, when you get them in. They can do what that one I just pulled off was. They will go yellow and then crispy and then they'll drop out. But you should be fine. You really should be fine. This one, if you want to know, is growing in pond. And it is one of few things that enjoys pond this much. I don't know if that's contributing to the colour. I wouldn't say it's under a ton of light. It's it's on one of my shelves, basically, guys. So I think the light from here is maybe 70 centimeters above it, perhaps. So it is in reasonable light. I won't lie. It's not in direct sun or anything like that. The lighting is purely artificial, but it looks like this. Could you ever want anything more from a blue plant? Not only a blue plant, but a plant that is just something different to what you've seen before, right? Because these aren't seen that often. I'm not saying they're rare, by the way. I'm saying people don't keep them. People don't keep them. So if you have one of these, let me know if they're actually difficult to care for or they're easy, or if you can get yours as blue as this, because I do have other ones in the shop, albeit they are imported. They obviously aren't as blue, but nothing's gone as blue as this one. So he's kind of like my baby. I do think he's reproduced himself a little bit. Like he could actually be split into two. I would never do such a thing, but how amazing is he? Wow. Literally, wow, not camera trickery, guys, I promise you. That is genuinely how blue he is. That is genuinely how blue he is. So does he impress me after all this time? Absolutely. He's just getting bigger and better. Can you imagine him if he gets huge? Oh my God. We're going to have to keep growing him forever. Literally, grow him forever. See how big he gets. He is just amazeballs. I love him. Now listen, you've told me many times to stop doing this, to stop showing it, to stop talking about it. Just stop. Just just stop. We've had enough. We've had enough. This plant has been out a long time. It's nothing new. It's very classic. We've seen it to death, Kayla. We don't care. We do not care about Philodendron Gloriosum anymore. Let me tell you something. I really do, and I have to mention him, because I still, 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 after all this time, walk around this shop 
take a look at plants like this and go, oh my God, that is amazing. Now, this chlorosome, I'll mention it very quickly and I won't linger on it because I know, I know you're going to be sick of hearing it. This one is a gloriosome round form, I think. You can probably tell just how round those leaves are. They're, they're very, very round and it's got some beautiful white veins. And right now it's got some nice dark leaves. This one's a very, very nice specimen. It does have a new leaf here that's sizing up even still. It's not sizing up too quickly. I actually stopped feeding it because it's got to the edge of the pot. But if you can tell, if I just tilt that a little bit there, it's to the edge of the pot. So I've, I've been a bit naughty and I've stopped feeding it, but it's very, very pretty, is it not? So I just have to talk about this. And it's more just a short off because it's very, very pretty. Look at that. If I just sit back and put myself into the grass behind me. I mean, come on, literally. How amazing is he? That's literally a secondary thumbnail. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. Look at him. Philodendron Gloriosum, reasonably affordable now. It is in some garden centers, guys, as in like ones that are a little bit more specialist. So it's not in every garden center, I don't think. And this is, I mean, I'm mainly talking about the UK here, but you can get them. I don't know if they're always super white veiny. I'm not sure. The ones I've seen aren't necessarily that veiny and they're a bit more muted like the the regular form so just be careful if you're looking for a specific one you might get a good deal you might not it depends what it is the hardest ones to get are the dark form and i think i've got one in my stash it's not really a stash is it it's it's a problem the amount of uh, glorious i have i think i've got one down there i sold one in 2020 and i really wish i hadn't if you own that gloriosome well done it's beautiful but yeah that's the hardest one to get the round form i don't see too often i don't know if it's a desirable one but you know people have it and of course you want one with juicy white beans for sure i just had to let you know that he still has my heart and i still love him like i don't care if he becomes available in garden centers i don't care I don't care. He should. He's good. That's that's testament to the fact he's good. And I know people get a bit like, uh, and a bit sort of uh, snooty, a bit, what's the word? Elitist? That might be the word actually that I'm looking for. People get very elitist about plants. It's like, oh, well, I don't want it now. It's not rare. It's a bit like, oh, that's a weird thing to say about a plant. I thought you collected them because you liked them. It's always been it for me. But I, I do think that it's testament to how good that plant is because it's in garden centers. And I think I might have said that a couple of years ago. I think I might have said it'll end up in garden centers because it's tough enough. I know a few people have problems growing it, but I think on the whole, people are finding it easy. And I'm going to use the fact it's coming into garden centers as backup for that. It's always going to be one of my favorites. I love it so much. That is Philodendron Gloriosum. Last one, super quick cameo from me. It's more of an excuse to show him off because I brought him upstairs. He was living downstairs very briefly, but he's, he's coming back upstairs now. Can you see him? It is who you think it is. Literally, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Now you're probably thinking, what on earth? This is a Maranta. It's not a, an Aroid. It's not rare. It's like one of the most common ones you can get. Yes, you're absolutely right. This is the first houseplant I bought when I moved to Manchester in 20, I want to say 17, maybe 2018 and he has stayed with me all the way since. His name is Gus, as in Gus from Cinderella. I think he's the little, he's the little mouse that is just a bit stupid, bless him, and he gets picked on and he's just, oh, he's, I identify with any character in any movie that's like that because it was basically me as a child. But this guy is just amazing. I found out about these plants basically because they can move and they can get stressed and sort of freak out and close up and stuff and I just thought that was the best thing ever and he's still with me after all this time. He's nearly died so several times he's come back from about what what did i have him at, at one point like four leaves or something ridiculous and he's just mint and i'll never let him go i'll never let him go so that's him there he still impresses me i still love him he needs to go to my house imminently but look at him he's not the only maranta i've got but he is he's always going to be the most special oh look Oh, bless him. He's really big, by the way. What on earth happened? That's the back of him. He does have some crispies. But you know me, I tend not to take the crispies off because I want you to see just how it is. But yeah, that's him. He's looking absolutely stunning. So that's him, Gus. I think his leaves are changing very quickly already. I'm going to pop him down here. He's going to have to live on the floor, I imagine. Plus, those plants uh, in the wild are very much in the undergrowth, under big trees and stuff like that in the jungle. So they thrive in a shady spot on the floor. That is like the best thing you could do for them. This one here, can you see this? Yeah, this one here is my lemon lime and it's in a shady spot under some stuff and look how much that is thriving. Now it's probably got a bit of a lean on. Yeah, most of its leaves are to the front, but let that just tell you how happy it is. If anything, it's still in too much light and you can probably tell by the 
the color of these leaves. They're not fully contrasted. There's a couple, but a lot of them aren't. So that's kind of testament to how much light they don't need. Obviously it looks a bit dark in here now. It's not that dark. But yeah, I love them so much. So, so much. So that is the last plant I have to tell you about today. And I hope you enjoyed just celebrating some of the plants I've had in, but albeit very different from each other, actually. And the fact that they still impress me and I still love them. And I still think, hmm, hell yeah, for very different reasons. Don't get me wrong. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job at making content that you enjoy. And similarly, if you are new to the channel or you're not already subscribed, because I think 50% of the people who watch my videos are actually not subscribed and some people tell me they've watched me like two years or something if you are not subscribed and you'd love to do so then please feel free to click that little button that's it for this week's video guys and i will see you in the next one bye